Head over to miniaturemarket.com and have thousands of board games at discounted prices like 0 to 100. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be counting from 0 to 100. But not just really counting, we're just trying to find which answer to a question that we have in front of us is closest to one of these numbers. So let me show you how this works. This is a party game from Scorpion Masque. Let's see how it works. Zero to 100 is designed to have three teams and it doesn't matter how many people are on each of those teams. However, if you're playing with two players, you can just play one against another. That's better with teams. Each team is gonna get six questions randomly. They don't look at the backs. And so here we have, how many fights did boxer Muhammad, Muhammad Ali have? What's the length of yards in the Airbus 380? How many days did it take American President James Garfield to die after being shot? What's the maximum height and feet that a Tyrannosaurus Rex could grow to? How many strings does a classical harp have? And how many chapters are there in the seventh book of Harry Potter? Now, the first question of the game, you're trying to get as close as you can to 50. So you and your teammates will discuss this, you'll come up with a conclusion, and you'll say, well, maybe it's this one. So once all the teams have decided which ones they're going with, they'll push it forward, and they'll all be read, and then they'll be flipped and resolved. The other two teams selected how many countries took part in the founding of the United Nations, and how many mammal species are there in Yellowstone National Park. And wow, flip this over, and actually two of them were really close. I did not know this, I was just guessing. So 47, 51, and 67, that's really close. This one's the closest, this one's second closest. You look at the one who's furthest away. Now, these cards will just get discarded after the, out of the game, and this does as well. That's just for the first round. This now becomes the new number for next round, and the team that played this must draw another card, which means the, the team that just played does not basically lose any cards. The other two teams have one card less because you start with six cards, and if you're not furthest away, you don't draw a card, and you're trying to get down to be the first team to have only one card left at the end of a round. If that is, you win. There's one other twist. You have these power cards. They're one-time use. They're double-sided. You can either subtract 20 or 50 or add 20 or 50 to a, car, to a number that you think. Basically, you flip it over and you do this to those. Or if you think you're within plus or minus five, you put this. If you're right, you actually get to lose a card in addition to not having to draw one, so it's faster to, be, to, to, to win. That's pretty much it. These are all one-time use. First one to get to one card wins or zero if you end up getting it with that. Uh, and if it's a tiebreaker, then the, the two teams that have one card left say what they think the number is on the back, flip it over, and whoever the closest is wins. Now, there are 158 question cards, and with three teams playing, you don't see all the cards, because even when the game ends, you don't look at the backs of those. But even if a team wins really fast, you're probably going to get 10 games out of this without seeing another one. Maybe even as low as seven games without seeing another card, but you might not see... Uh, you might not really pay attention to what other players' answers are. You might not remember them after a period of time. Uh, I do wish there were more cards in here, but this should at least get you started. Hopefully this sells well. They'll come out with more cards. All right. Now, before I get to my final thoughts, I want to let you know that if you like my content, there's now ways to get bonus content like first impression videos well before a review will come out or for many games I don't even end up reviewing. You can even vote for which games get reviewed on the channel. You can also see me opening up packages and getting content earlier than everyone else. Well... If you like that, you can check it out at patreon.com slash gameboygeek. All right, let's talk about what I liked about this. So I like this because you could literally teach this game in one minute. Like it's super simple, sort of mass market easy. Uh, it plays a lot. It could play large crowds as well, where you have like just teams. You can even have a whole table full of people. You could have three tables full of people with 10 or more people if you want to, and they're all discussing it and this and that. So you could play as little as two players or a ton of players, which I really like. I like that you're trying to decide which is the closest with teammates. Now it does say you can play two players or you can even play three players. I find it more fun with at least six because then people are talking. It's fun to sort of, oh, what do you think about this? No, 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 I think and different people know different things. And it's fun to sort of bounce ideas off of you. Now the game's fine with if it's just yourself because you're just, you know, I think this one, you go with it and it, it works, it's fine. It's one of those rare party games that kind of still works in lower player counts. Most party games that are like true legit party games are always better with more people. And I think this one is better with more people, but it still works fine and it's still enjoyable enough that I would still pull it out where many party games with two, three or four players, it's not quite good enough to want to pull out or some of them don't even play those lower player counts. So I think this is cool that you can play it with lower. I like it more with more, but it still works fine with less players. 
I like the uh, power cards. So using these and you're trying to find the right time to say, hey, this is plus 20 or minus 20, plus 50, minus 50, or I think I am as close of within five, either plus or minus of the actual number, and I get to get rid of an additional card. That's really cool. Using those cards at the right time and getting them and helping you is the key to winning this game. And I like that that's just one more element of sort of gameriness in the game in, in what's otherwise a very simple game. It, it's still simple, but it gives you another layer of depth that us gamers really like. Uh, and it's still it's easy to teach for a mass market in that regard, too. I like that it gets harder as you get closer to winning because as you get closer, you have less and less cards, which means you have less and less choices, which means they get tougher, which means you got to really find the right time again to use those, those power cards. But I like that. It's almost like a built-in catch-up mechanism where the person who's in last place, uh, they've got more cards than you to, 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 to use that possibly will have the right answer for the right number. I also like that when the whoever's furthest off, that number becomes the new one. And so like it's constantly sort of bouncing around quite a bit what number you're trying to shoot for. Uh, and again, it still works with two players, which is really cool. On the negative side of things, uh, not a lot here, really, uh, other than the amount of content. Now, this your mileage may vary, but there's 158 cards. The least amount of turns you're going to have in this game are five. If one team never is the furthest away, they're going to they're going to win after five turns. Five turns in three teams is 15. So the least amount of plays, or I'd say the maximum amount of plays you'll probably get in this game without seeing a card again the second time is 10. Um, and that's like the best case scenario. Most likely it's gonna be more like seven plays. Now with that being said, at first it seems like, oh, I'm only gonna get seven plays. No, because first of all, by the time it says to use the cards in order, and so by the time you get back around to the first one, you're probably not gonna remember those. Some of them you will, for example, when we played, we had this discussion, my teammate and I, about the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I thought it was much taller than he did. He knew what it was like within two feet. And he was very adamant about that. And because we discussed it like that, and because it was such a surprise to me, and he was like, oh, I'm right, we will, the, the both of us will never forget the height of the Max T-Rex, okay? So anytime we play this game, we're gonna know it. And there'll be certain cards like that that you'll probably remember, but majority of them you're not going to remember. So in reality, even though you only get 10, seven to 10 plays without seeing the same card again, it doesn't mean that A, you're not gonna remember it, because most likely you probably won't remember most. The other thing is that when, when all the teams, they, they say what their things are, then when you flip them up and you look at the numbers and you get excited and you do all this, I've already forgotten exactly what the question was that that number pertains to and which one that pertains to. I more likely will remember mine, but I probably won't remember the other two exactly. Even that moment, regardless three months from now. So even though it has somewhat limited replayability, your mileage may vary. You'll probably actually get more real-time plays in that. With that being said, I still wish there were more cards in there. I hope they expand this. So that's the only thing I could say. Uh, I think... Uh, some people might think there's a little less replayability than it's here, but again, if you don't really, you're not really gonna remember what other players' cards were with those numbers, and again, over time, you're gonna not remember them. So, with that being said, that's the only negative thing I can think of, but the box is small, the price is right, you're getting what you pay for it. So, with that being said, those are the only negative things I can say about this game. It's really fun, it's great for gamers and non gamers alike, and that is 0 to 100. It's been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relations with board games by helping you by the next one you love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.